Hey Teotiers, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Before we start though, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe and also hit the notification button. So that way you can get notified of every new video that comes out. Also, live a little. Join the Discord if you haven't joined the Discord. Uh, there's lots of cool uh, channels in there you can be part of. There's lots of great healthy discussions in there from Linux to BSD. As well as there is Ask TLT section in there. So if you have questions that you want to ask me, feel free to ask me there. One of the things I forgot to mention is that the link to the Discord is in the description down below, as well as my Buy Me a Coffee and several other links. Uh, today's video is going to be a little different because it's basically a conversation that I feel needs to be had. Uh, it In talking to a few developers uh, here lately, there's been something that I've noticed a while ago that's been happening and continues to happen. And it's that there are a lot of newer to Linux users that are going and using dis distributions that are not really meant to be to somebody who is first diving into Linux. Because of the complexity of Linux and the complexity of that, these distributions are mainly not exactly the stablest of distributions because they're considered rolling release distributions. Even though some stable distributions have a stable version and a rolling release version, OpenSUSE is one of those that comes to mind. You know, it's got a stable version and it's got a rolling release version and if you're a new to linux user and you're gravitating towards the newer one or i mean to the to the stable one versus the rolling release one that's the smart choice also debian's that way too you know they've got the regular debian stable and then they've got the the rolling release version as well and if you're you know gravitating towards the stable versions then yes that's fine but there are distributions out there that do not have any they're actually designed to be rolling release they're not there's not considered stable versions the largest one that comes to mind is arch linux and most notably the arch distributions that i'm talking about are ones like garuda linux arco linux zero linux uh endeavor os manjaro manjaro is the one that started this making it easy to install uh arch linux and use it uh type forks it's it's mainly the forks and now even vanilla OS with their installer script is doing it. And where there's pause to concern there is because you get a lot of these new to Linux users that come in to these distributions, they install them, they get them up and running, they are using it for their daily driver, they're doing their basic things that they want to do with it. And then here comes the first set of updates and so without thinking especially if they're gravitating from the windows world they're automatically conditioned to be like i have to have these updates so they it, it doesn't just automatically do it like it does in windows and forces you to do it so they click the button because they figure oh i gotta have it so then when they click that button it does its thing it updates it uh it it, it, it runs in the background and then in like if the Pac-Man Pamac GUI, it'll tell you a reboot or restart is necessary. So they click on it, they reboot, and all of a sudden their machine's broke. And they're like, what the heck? All I did was update. That's not uncommon if you're coming from the Windows world. But at any instance, they're like, what? And now they're like, they're they they're, they're to fix it, they're the Windows is not on Windows will usually send out an update that it'll fix the break or whatever. But in in the Linux world, that does happen too, but at a much slower pace, or you have to roll it back yourself, and you have to fix it yourself. And they're not prepared to do that because their skill set isn't at that level. And that's not anything other than that they don't have experience enough in Linux to do it. 
Now, the question is, is whose fault is that? Is that the developer's fault or the new to Linux user's fault? I kind of want to say it's a little bit of both. One, I understand the eagerness of a new to Linux user coming in and being like, I want to use what everybody else that's being great is, you know, I see these YouTubers that are using, you know, uh, you know, Arch-based distributions. We almost all use Arch-based distributions. And, and you know, I, I want to use that because that's what they're, that, that, that's what they're using. I want to, I want to, you know, that must be the best thing. Right. For us, it is because we're used to testing a lot of stuff. We're used to breaking stuff and fixing it. We're used to doing all this stuff. But when you're a new to Linux user, that is overwhelming. So no, it's not advised to them. And then people that are advising that to them because of how easy it is to install is an issue as well. You know, I understand you want your friend to be on kind of like your level and you want to hold a hand, but eventually you get tired of holding their hand and you will tell them to RTFM as well. I mean, if you've had been in at Linux for any amount of time with, I'd say at least three, four years, whatever, you know that you have that one person. Cause we all have it. We have that one person, that one person who said, Hey, I want to try Linux. And you go out of your way to help them set up Linux. You get it all set up for them. You kind of give them a little tutorial. You, you'd say, Hey, look, here's a place where you can go to get this information. Here's a place you can go to this information. You can call me too. I'm willing to help you. You're my friend. Hey, you know, let's make this a positive experience for you. And inevitably that person tests your last strand of patience because they're asking you a bajillion and one questions on how to do this, how to do that. And you're like, I showed you where you can go to. I told you you can look at the manual, read the wiki, this, that, and, other. and yet they still want you to hold their hand, so to speak. And, and that happens to a lot of seasoned veterans in different forums, in different areas where they can be, you know, reach that through the through their web pages, their websites, through their YouTube videos, whatever it is, the Discord server, whatever. You just get peppered to death with these new to Linux users questions that are asking for some of the more basic stuff on how to fix something that they broke and or install something. And it's all because they don't have that experience, but yet they're on a distribution that is meant to be for a seasoned veteran. Where I blame the developers for is if you are creating a distribution that is like that, you should really kind of like a performer. A performer, when they take the stage for whatever it is, whether they're singing or whether they're they're doing a TED talk or whatever, you're going to want to cater to your audience you're going to perform to that audience in other words if you're a tribute band that is more rock and roll you know centric you're not going to go on there and start and you draw that crowd because that's what the marquee says you're not going to go out there and start singing lady gaga or you know elton john you're going to start singing them stuff more like you know def leopard poison five finger death punch whatever you know, rock and roll, right? Well, it's the same thing with these distributions. If you're creating a distribution or a fork of a distribution that is going to be complex based, such as like Arch, Gen 2, LFS, you know, all these other ones, right? You're not going to want to make it so easy, right? For new to Linux users to get misled into thinking that it's an easy distribution because you can install it easy it comes completely set up out of the box for you to where you don't have to do any of the command line stuff to do anything in there to set it up appropriately and another thing that i wanted to add in there too uh besides making it easy to install and completely set up out of the box with a lot of programs already installed uh is ricing what what happened to the days of where you created your own rices, you did your own uh, theming instead of ricing, you know, uh, your own theming, you know, like you have these wonderful distributions that come out already beautifully set up like Garuda, Zero Linux, again, you know, completely themed right out of the box for you. So that that way, all you got to do is load it and use it and expect, you know, to be, be treated just like it was Ubuntu or whatever. Only difference is, is it's on Arch. So, so these users get even more, handheld and fed on the ease of things i mean it used to take hours 
to theme, if not days, correctly, a a desktop environment or even a non-desktop environment like window manager takes even longer you know but either way now you can just point click select and install a desktop environment in some of these already customized forks of arch linux that just make it way too easy and and that can be misleading because eventually when it breaks because of updates that get pushed upstream or whatever, people are going to have a hard time. Now, I'm not talking about like the arch thing with the with with, with the grub issue that happened because that happened on a grub level. That that is that is a kind of a one off, so to speak. I mean, it does happen, but but not as prevalently as as usual. You know, as as like you know, you're updating a KDE and, and KDE, you know, has a service that, that or a uh, a uh, dependency that breaks a package here and there. It, it's something for for like theming or whatever. That happens a little bit more consistently than others. But at any instance, things tend to break more in that because it's a rolling release. If you're ro doing a rolling release distribution and you're developing for it or maintaining it, I suggest taking away some of the easier installation process. I know people hate to get into an end curses style or something, but do it in a way that it gives pause for the user that might be getting into it to be like, oh, this is kind of above my level. And, the, you know, also another way to do it, too, is if you are like in like there's a lot of distributions like in Arch Linux it is the number one that comes to mind. You know, you have like Zero Linux, you got Blue Star Linux, you've got Garuda Linux, you got Manjaro Linux, you've got pretty much so uh, uh, all those that I gave, Endeavor OS, you've got all those that I gave all have the Colomars installer. Colomars came along and made installing Arch very easy. And in doing so, it kind of gives a misleading idea that just anybody can just pick up Arch and start using it, which is not the case. It's literally one of those RTFM distributions where you're going to be spending a lot of time in the arch wiki to figure some stuff out you know and and then furthermore then like like arco linux zero linux garuda they have these wonderful tools and in these tools they put all these buttons and all these things that you can click in it and make it so that it fixes some of the simpler but more complex issues that a new to linux user is going to bridge like how to install programs you know and, and applications you know i, I get away from pat I, I wish people got away from 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 Pamac. Get away from the GUI, the GUI, you know, package installers and start learning how to do stuff, you know, in command line so that that way you can you can do that. I mean, in a way that also happens in Debian based with the Snap to package manager. But that's still a lot harder than the actual like the Ubuntu software center. Those are very misleading. Also getting away from the GUI package manager forces them to use the command line, which gives a little bit more information as to what the package is actually doing. And also if your tendency or a dependency is going to break something, it'll also warn you there. So they have knowledge of what's going on. Whereas with a lot of these GUI package managers, it'll just update in the end. You do restart and all of a sudden it won't tell you. Now, yes, there is a button you can click usually somewhere on the like PAMAC, you know, or down that little arrow on the bottom right hand corner that'll take you to the terminal output, right? And and then you can see that. But a seasoned veteran is going to know that a non-seasoned veteran or a new to Linux user will inevitably not know that they'll find it, but they won't understand what they're reading on there for the most part, and it'll confuse them. So either way, it, 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 it makes it easy for them to break something without being completely or honestly notified, and they wind up breaking something. Whereas with the terminal, you have to click yes, because PAMAC usually runs everything, no, no confirm. So that's an issue too, because you you know Linux is not actually easy by nature. You are going to have to do some command line stuff, and desperately more and more people are trying to get away from it, which is kind of odd, because that's not what Linux was about. You know, Linux was about being a nerd's distribution, so to speak, and using stuff in command line and doing things, you know, in 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 a more powerful way. 
and not being limited. And so, uh, I, but it's a growing process to learn it and to use it. And a lot of people are just diving into the deep end right away. And and I, I'm just trying to put this video out there to bring awareness to that because I don't know if some people aren't realizing it, but they're making distributions it's specifically I'm more so speaking towards Arch Arch developers. They're making these distributions a little too easy for new to Linux users and not very seasoned users to jump to and without learning their process. And then when they show up in their Discord servers or they show up in their forums or their web page blogs or wherever they have their, their contact info being being put at and getting peppered with all these questions, they've got the balls to kind of get mad about it. But really... If you made it that easy for them by putting all these installers in, then you kind of got to own that a little bit. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to to be mean about anything, but you know, you, you got a little bit of a burden here because you made it that easy for those guys to get into. And then now you want to drop the ball on them. And that's kind of not nice. No matter how you look at it, you know, so, and it, and I'm not saying that you're mean to people, or I'm not saying that people are, some people actually are being mean to people when they ask the, oh, go RTFM kid, and then they just, you know, blow them off or whatever, you know, that does happen. But eventually, if you are nice, you get wore down with the volume of questions. Even I've gotten asked questions before in my YouTube video. I'm like, that's a kind of a basic question, but I still refer to them to an answer, and it's kind of hard. I'm just putting that out there for some actual Linux awareness that uh, if you are recommending a distribution to somebody, make sure that you're singing to the right audience. Make sure that you're putting the right distribution in that new to Linux user's hands. Even though they have years of computing experience with Windows or Mac or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have a very easy time with Linux. If they do, great then they could spend a month and a half on Linux Mint or whatever, and then boom, they can bounce to something that challenges them a little bit more. Or they could spend their time learning on a more basic, stable distribution that they can grow with and achieve more with. And also, if you are a more seasoned veteran, then you might want to set them up with a virtualization and show them how to do that so that that way they could use their basic one for their daily stuff and test drive it in their virtualization with like virtual box or something like that. It's as simple as opening up an app and firing it up and then it closes. It's a lot easier doing that than putting it on bare metal and having them experience a horrible experience. And this, and developers, Think about what you're developing and think about what you want on the back end coming at you. I understand that you're trying to develop a great product because you want to set up something out there for people the way that you like to use that distribution. But if you're not making it for people to use that are new to Linux users, then don't make it easy for them to get into it. That's all I'm saying. Until then, I'll ask you guys to keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay safe, stay blessed, and above all, have a great day, and I will see you in the very next video.